Recently, I changed the layout of my workshop, moving the workbench and the table saw into the center of the space, and that's created one issue. The space around my workbench is now really quite tight, and it's been okay as far as walking around it is concerned, but there really isn't enough space to set up my camera tripod. The distance that these tripod legs span when fully extended is 90 centimeters, and the width of my walkways in the workshop are around 60 centimeters and around 45 centimeters. So if I want to film something over at the belt sander, for example, I have to kind of pinch the legs of the tripod in, and that makes it really unstable, which means I often end up knocking the camera over. To be honest, I'm surprised the camera is even still working at this point. The tripod is also quite awkward to adjust. For example, if I want to adjust my tripod from being in this position to this position, which I do quite frequently, that takes 10 separate individual adjustments. Recently, two of my favorite YouTube woodworkers, Jay Bates and Jeremy Schmidt, both made mobile camera stands. And both were a pretty similar concept, but both brilliant in their own ways. Jay's was definitely the simpler of the two, and it's probably the one that mine will end up being most similar to. I'll link to both Jay and Jeremy's videos in the description box below. Definitely check those out if you're interested in this kind of thing. Much like Jay's build, mine's going to begin with a bucket. I've also got this salvaged fence post which has a few holes in it as you can see, but I'm gonna grind those flat and I don't think that will affect the way that the camera stand operates too much. This thing is just under 34 millimeters wide. In Jay's video, he built a square wheelbase that fits around the bucket and that's a really good idea because it means that the center of gravity for all of the weight inside the bucket is nice and low and it'll ultimately make for a more stable base. But I don't have the luxury of using that kind of space around the bucket so what I'm going to do is to cut a piece of plywood to fit inside the bottom of the bucket and that way I can mount the wheels through the plastic into that plywood. This bucket is 28 centimeters in diameter. Internally that looks to be about 277 millimeters. I said I was going to use plywood but actually I've got this scrap of chipboard which is an old loft floorboard and this is about the right size so that's what I'm going to use. I don't have a large compass unfortunately so I'm just going to put a nail in the center. Then I've tied a loop in some string. Half of 277 is 138 and a half. So I'll mark that up here. I'll tie a knot at 138 millimeters and then I can draw a circle. I'll just check that's 277. That looks about right. So now I can cut that on the bandsaw. I refined the shape of the circle up to the pencil line that I'd made on the belt sander. Now to see if it fits, and it really doesn't need to be perfect anyway. Looks good. Now using that nail hole that I punched in the centre, I'm going to drill a hole with a 35mm Forstner bit. And that should fit around this pipe. Now with the piece of wood in the bottom of the bucket, I'm going to add four casters to the bottom. I've drilled some pilot holes through the plastic, and now I can add screws through the plastic and the wood, and I'm holding the wood in place from the other side. That's all four casters added now, and I was worried about how unstable this might be because the wheels are quite close together, but actually, I think it'll be fine. And the screws go right through the plastic and through the wood and they protrude, which is a good thing because it will give the concrete something to bite onto so the concrete shouldn't twist around at any point in the future. This pole is much longer than it needs to be at the moment so I'll cut it down to 1.8 meters. And while I've got the angle grinder out, I may as well smooth over where these old holes are. I've drilled a hole all the way through the pole near the bottom and I'm going to add a bolt and a nut just like Jay did. And that will give the concrete something else to bite onto. 
Because the pole is quite heavy and it's only going to be resting on a thin piece of plastic at the bottom of this bucket, I think I'm going to reinforce it. I cut out another chipboard circle and mounted it to the bottom of the bucket to support the weight of the pole. One of these wheels slightly catches on that circle I've just added, so I'm just going to carve away some of that material. I bought some of this concrete mix and you just add water to this stuff. Now I'm going to try and beat some of the air bubbles out of the concrete. I've got this useful corner of the bandsaw table that I'm going to use to try and keep the pole upright. And now I can check that this is plumb and make adjustments by moving the bucket rather than the pole. I've given the concrete a good 9 or 10 hours now to set and it's pretty solid. I can move it around by the pole, which is good. The next thing that I want to do is cut another circle of wood to sit on top of the concrete. So I need to measure the internal diameter on top of the concrete, which looks to be about 29 centimetres. Then I could slide the circular piece of melamine over the pole and into the bucket. And I secured it using some drywall screws and some brass washers through the sides of the bucket. Next I could cut away the excess material at the top of the bucket and I used an oscillating tool for this. And I cleaned up those cuts with a knife. I used Jay Bates design for the arm mount and his video covers that in detail. I first cut three hardwood strips and drilled a recess into one of them with a forstner bit before drilling a hole all the way through the centre which allowed me to fit a T-nut. Then I cut a couple of pieces of plywood for the sides and assembled everything with glue and screws. And what you are seeing now is actually my second attempt at doing this. My first attempt was not successful and I'll cover that at the end of this video. Next I needed to make a knob which would secure the mount to the pole. With my table saw blade tilted to 45 degrees, I cut off each corner of a square scrap of oak. Then I found the center and drilled a hole all the way through on the drill press. I needed to drill this hole from both sides in order to get all the way through the workpiece. I've added a bolt through the knob and on the other end I'm just going to put a washer and a nut. I cut off some of the excess length on the bolt using a hacksaw. That's really solid. I'm happy with that. I used a couple of oak kitchen worktop cutoffs to make two arms that would form part of the parallelogram. Again, very similar to Jay Bates's design. After drilling holes with them held firmly together so that the holes were in the same position on each piece, I then rounded over the end of each arm using the bandsaw and disc sander. I've got these Allen key coach bolt style things that came from an old pine bed frame and I'm going to use these because part of the shaft is threaded and part isn't and this arm can rotate on the part that isn't threaded. That didn't really work out because when I moved the arm it was screwing and unscrewing the bolts. So I've drilled out this hole with a 7mm bit and I drilled this hole with a 6mm bit so now the screw should fit through this hole with no resistance and actually grip into the threads on this piece. And that's done the job, the screw head is no longer turning with the arm. I've cut another piece of oak to length and this is the piece that will actually hold the head of my tripod. 
So I need to drill a hole in this for a bolt that will fit the thread of my tripod head. And I've looked everywhere for a bolt that will fit this thread, but because it's an old imperial size, nobody locally to me seems to sell them anymore. But luckily one of my friends raided his shed and he found this bolt which fits the tripod head perfectly. So now I need to drill a hole in the end, then I can screw in the bolt, and then I can cut off the bolt and leave some of the thread on which to mount my tripod head. Looks like my hole will need to be nine millimeters. Before I add the bolt, I'm going to add some epoxy to the hole. Here I'm making sure to position the arms at an equal distance away from one another. This is to ensure that the piece of wood that holds the tripod head remains parallel to the mount on the pole. I've now got three of the four bolts added to the parallelogram, but for the final hole I'm going to use a bolt, a washer and a wing nut, and that will allow me to be able to tighten and loosen the whole mechanism. I'll need to drill this hole all the way through. Next I used the angle grinder to cut off the excess piece of the bolt. And that left a splayed out end. So I used my electric file to round it over so that the tripod head would fit into the thread. I applied boiled linseed oil to all of the wooden parts. Just a couple of things that I wanted to mention before the end of the video. Firstly, this piece here which mounts to the pole is actually the second version of this part that I made. This one over here is the first version that I made and there were two problems with this one. Firstly, the strips of hardwood that I cut were quite a bit thicker on this version and that made it very heavy so when the bolt was loosened the weight of this part made it want to plummet quickly to the ground. The second and more significant issue with this one is that I mounted the T-nuts on the outside of the mount rather than on the inside of the mount and when I fitted this part onto the pole and tightened the knob the T-nut actually failed and popped out as the tension increased. So I went back and had another study of Jay Bates's video before building the second version and I realised that he mounted the T-nut on the inside so that's what I did on the second version and that functions perfectly. I had never used T-nuts before this point but in hindsight it now makes a lot of sense why this works on the inside and not the outside and that's because with the nut on the outside the tension of the bolt is pulling the T-nut into the wood so the prongs on the nut that are embedded into the wood can't pull out under tension. Another thing to mention, if I want to film outside and I don't want the hassle of trying to drag a big lump of concrete out there with me one of the perks of using this head is that I can just remove it from this stand and mount it again to the tripod. So I have used this thing for a couple of projects already and there's one other thing I wanted to talk about. This thing would be much easier to move around if the distance between the wheels on the base was increased. So at the moment I can move this around with just my hand but I do need to grip the pole quite low down in order to get it to move. What works better is to grab the pole with one hand and give it a nudge with my foot and that's been the easiest way to use it so far. I've given that some thought and I realised I could probably get away with making the wheels a little bit further out by mounting a ring of plywood around the base of the bucket which I could attach by screwing into the piece of chipboard which is inside and then I could mount the wheels so that two of the outer screws are attached to the plywood as opposed to the bottom of the bucket and that way it would still just about fit down the narrowest walkway of my workshop but to be honest, I really don't have a big problem with moving it around with a combination of one hand and one foot. So I'm not sure I'll bother doing that. I've also thought about replacing this wing nut with something more substantial. I noticed in Jay's video he added quite a big lever to get more leverage on tightening that down. But my camera is relatively light to be honest. And at the moment with this done up quite tight and the screws done up quite tight as well, I can position it wherever I want it and it really doesn't want to move anywhere. And I think that problem depends on how heavy your camera is. If you're using a big DSLR, then this could definitely be a problem. But if you're using a handheld camcorder like me, 
then it's not so much of an issue. Aside from those things, I'm really happy with how this thing turned out and it's already made my life a hell of a lot easier. So I just want to say a big thank you to Jeremy Schmidt and Jay Bates for their excellent videos because I really wouldn't have had this idea without seeing those. And definitely go and check out their YouTube channels if you're not familiar with them already. I'll link to them both below. 